Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you may take the call over. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Krishna. We'll bring up the verse. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Synonyms Kachit sometimes Cha also Vishesha unlimited Dosha of faults Nisadanam the source of Parisha of stool Visheshan a particular type Tat Varna Guna, the color is the same as that of the mode of passion reddish. Nirmita Mati, whose mind is absorbed in that. Suvarnam, gold. Upaditsati, desiring to get. Admikama, by the desire for fire. Karata, who is troubled. Iva, like. Ummukha, he said, come, a phosphorescent light known as the will of the wisp, which is sometimes mistaken for a ghost. Translation. Okay. Drop it down a little bit, there you go. Sometimes, that's good. Sometimes a living entity is interested in the yellow stool known as gold and runs after it. That gold is a source of material opulence and envy. And it can enable one to afford illicit sex, gambling, meeting, and intoxication. Those whose minds are overcome by the mode of passion are attracted by the color of gold. Just as a man suffering from cold in the forest runs after phosphorescent light in a marshy land, consider it, it to be by a purple. Rikshan Maharaj told Kali Yuga to leave his kingdom immediately and reside in four places, brothels, liquor shops, slaughterhouses, and gambling casinos. However, Kali Yuga requested him to give him only one place where these four places are included. And Maharaj Priksha gave him the place where gold is stored. Gold encompasses the four principles of sin and therefore, according to spiritual life, gold should be avoided as far as possible. If there is gold, there is a certain illicit sex, meat eating, gambling, intoxication. Because people in the Western world have a great deal of gold, they are victims of these four sins. The color of gold is very glittering and a materialistic person becomes very much attracted by its yellow color. However, this gold is a type of, actually a type of stool. A person with a bad liver generally passes yellow stool. The color of this stool attracts a materialistic person, just like the will of the wisps attracts one who needs heat. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasma Shri Gurubhina Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhuta Lake Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhuta Lake Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste, Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pachari Ne Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya Devi Satari Ne Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripasindu Pevacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivindu Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this 14th chapter of the fifth canto 
is a interesting chapter because it gets right to the essence of material existence. Uh, material existence is an anomaly and is not meant. It says there's one verse in the material in the uh, fifth canto also that the living entity should not have ever come to this material world. This material world is like a, as compared by Srila Prabhupada, it's simply a bathroom where one comes to pass stool and urine. And that's all. So you might think, wow, these statements sound to be quite condemning and quite overstated. But Srimad Bhagavatam doesn't mince or doesn't patronize anyone's material attachments. It gets right to the essence. We call, we call it, when you want to get to something right to the essence, you call it, you go for threadbare. You get down to the essence. The cloth is made out of so many threads woven together, which makes a very nice cloth. But if you take it apart, you'll find it's just a series of threads put together in a very nice way to make a, a big pattern. So these, these statements, especially in the fifth canto of this fifth cha 14th chapter of the fifth canto, gets right to the essence of material existence. And here, in particular, picks up on one thing, gold, <laughs> or you might say wealth, <laughs> in this case, gold. When Kali was restricted by Maharaj Parikshit for continuing its harassment of religious principles in the form of bull, Maharaj Parikshit was a very strong leader. He didn't want any kind of sinful activity going on in his kingdom. And that is the duty of a a righteous king, wherever there's sinful activity, their duty is to arrange for it to be left or leave, or the persons who are committing it for them to leave. That is a rule, that is a real king. king. He lives by righteousness and not simply by votes by people who are sinful. And so Maharaj Parikshit was very strong. And he said, when Kali said, give me a place where I can reside. And uh, he said, uh, well, wherever you see illicit sex, meat eating, gambling, intoxication, there's where you can reside. And Kali responded, well, in your kingdom, there is no such place. <laughs> so where do I go? So then Maharaj Pariksit gave him this, wherever there's the hoarding of gold, like that, wherever there's the hoarding of gold, then you can find residence there. So gold brings about all sinful activities, the hoarding of gold. Just like nowadays, you can't buy gold even if you wanted it because all of the uh, big, big uh, jaminders or the big wealthy people, they buy up all the gold. <laughs> and uh, their whole lives center around these four sinful activities, meat eating, illicit sex, intoxication, and gambling. In fact, that's what goes on when Srila Prabhupada was in uh, No, was actually was Srila Prabhupada's godbrother. Before a Krishna consciousness came to America, the devotees under the guidance of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati were preaching in, in the UK, United Kingdom. And they met one uh, Lord, Lord Fenno Brockway. And uh, he had been to India previously, so he had some a little bit of attraction for the Vedic culture, especially Brahmanism. 
So he had met this uh, disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and he said to him, can you make me a Brahmana? And uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's disciple, Prabhupada's godbrother said, yes, we can make you a Brahmana. Well, what do I have to do? You simply have to follow these four principles, no illicit sex, no meat eating, no gambling, no intoxication. The response from the Lord was impossible. These are our life. <laughs> so when Prabhupada had heard that, he said, when I came to the Western world, I was going to impose something that is impossible. <laughs> but he said, let me try anyway. <laughs> and a small class of people somehow took it up. And some of them are still following. And you might say not everybody who took it up enthusiastically is still following these four. It's very difficult to follow these four principles. No illicit sex, no meat eating, no gambling, no intoxication. And when you go into the details of each one of them, you'll find there are uh, subcategories, which, you, which are the part of the bigger category. Well, people are inclined to sinful activities. So these were, wherever there's gold hoarded there, these things go on profusely. So gold, and here Prabhupada makes the point that where there's, there's hoarding of gold, there is also envy. Envy, envy in the sense that I'm, wealth can never satisfy anyone. The more wealth a person has, the more they want. And the more they get, the less satisfied they are, but they continue in that direction. And they develop this envy. What is that envy? They're always trying to get wealth from different places, even causing harm and making many plans to get it. Just like Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he's, Krishna's quoting demons. So much wealth do I have today, and so much wealth in the future will be mine. I have so many enemies, and they've been killed, and my other enemies will also be killed. I'm surrounded by aristocratic relatives. I am perfect. I am I'm I'm perfect. I am proud. I am happy. And this way, I shall give some charity and I shall rejoice. Well, Krishna recites the ultimate conspiracy theory. <laughs> some people say, well, that's a conspiracy theory. Well, Krishna gave the original conspiracy theory in the Bhagavad Gita when he quotes the demons. So much wealth I have today, so much mine will be mine in the future. I have my plans. <laughs> that's the demons. And so, this, this gold is, a, in, is called yellow. It's the color of yellow. And here Prabhupada gives a nice analogy for those who really like to go deep into the essence of Krishna conscious philosophy. Uh, when a person has a bad liver, and they have some kind of jaundice. And so when they pass stool, it's yellow. <laughs> it's a yellow color stool. So this, this analogy is compared to gold, that it's no better than yellow stool. <laughs> it's kind of strong, but it gets right to the point. What is real wealth? Knowledge. What is real wealth? Devotion. What is real wealth? Good qualities, good character. And this is the real wealth not this materialistic stuff that people chase after, kill each other for, try to get more for, and try to enjoy unlimitedly sinful activities in the form of these four mentioned here. Of course, there are many other forms of, uh, of uh, sinful activities, which are all included in these four activities. Now, so this verse is really clear to under, give you an understand that this material world 
is simply a place where the living entity makes a fool out of themselves. <laughs> we act contrary to our actually identity. We think we are the body. We think that every, every pe the purple people are, that surround us in forms of relatives and friends are related to us. We think that the possessions we have are for our enjoyment. All of these things are the foolishness of the living entity and therefore they become more and more trapped in the illusion of that I am the enjoyer. And then what happens, that illusion simply propagates itself where people compete each other against each other, against the material energy to get more, to try to enjoy more. There used to be an old bumper sticker. It's still probably around somewhere. When I used to do Sankirtan in the United States of America, it was kind of a, a spoof, kind of a facetious bumper sticker, but it had a message. It says, he who dies with the most toys wins. <laughs> now, he who dies with the most toys wins. In other words, everyone's trying to accumulate as much as they can and then they die. But I died with more than you did, so I'm better than you. <laughs> but the fact is you died. <laughs> Therefore, you don't have any of it anymore. <laughs> and so people are materialistic people are attracted to materialistic wealth power, position, all based on getting more and more sense gratification in the form of these sinful activities. So a devotee, when he reads these verses, these, they think, hmm, this is, the, this, is, this is the fool's paradise. And you'll see as you go on in this chapter right here at verse number seven, this chapter continues to give many, many analogies of the foolishness of the living entities activities in the material world, showing the futility of material life and how it, it just entraps the living entity into a series of ridiculous activities that simply bring them uh, frustration and suffering. And that's the material world. It's simply made for the living entity to suffer, that's all. Unless they become Krishna conscious, that is the only way out. So you'll see Kali Yuga, you know, the living entities, more gambling casinos, more slaughterhouses, more liquor shops, more places of illicit sex, all these things now, they're big businesses. You drive along the highways, you see billboards advertising these things now. I remember when I first used to do Sankirtan in the early days, you would never see signs about gambling casinos. But then after some time everywhere, signs about this casino, that casino, this place. And these are all meant to get people to waste their money so someone else can get it and then you know ruin their life in these different ways out of these four activities the most mentally debilitating of all of the four is gambling it's even worse than intoxication one who comes addicted to gambling loses all all good qualities there's nothing left and their mind is so much fixed on getting something and they'll do anything to get it there are people who have gambled away their fortune we see even the example of the the uh the pandavas in the gambling match with the kurus they lost everything <laughs> and they lost their wife they even lost their clothes they lost everything <laughs> because of gambling. So yeah, this, we can see how uh, destructive these four sinful activities are. 
And in, to, in order to engage into it, you have to have gold, you have to have wealth, which is compared to a disease <laughs> of the liver. <laughs> That's all. So, uh, yeah. And then the verse and ends, just as a man is suffering from cold in the forest, runs after a phosphorescent light in a marshy land, consider it to be fire. And this is like, because of the cold, then one starts to really hanker for heat. And then they, that hankering makes them see a phosphorescent light in a certain area of the forest. And they consider it to be fire and they run to her. Just as a thirsty man in the desert sees a mirage and runs after a lake of water which does not exist. So in the same way, the, the foolish materialistic persons simply chase after these things which give them no satisfaction, no happiness. Okay, so we'll stop there. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Very, very nice class. As always, very enlightening, very... Um, and you make it so simple with all your examples. Thank you, Maharaj, for the wonderful, wonderful analogies. And also for pointing out, uh, out of the four sins, which one is the most, uh, the worst of all. Mentally debilitating. Mm, true. Thank you, Maharaj. If um, anybody has any questions, devotees, you may go ahead now. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my Dandrat Pranam. Thank you. So, Hare Krishna. Yeah, so Maharaj, like uh, uh, in, in today's time, like most of the temples have a uh, lot of gold. And uh, like most of the deities and uh, are decorated with gold as well. And uh, in India, especially like some of the richest temples, like big temples have tons of golds. So how do we understand that in light of this verse? For Krishna, it's okay. Okay. You use it for Krishna. Yeah. Wealth is meant to be used for the service of the Supreme Personality of God. Gold, silver, platinum, lapis lazuli, rubies, emeralds. Mm -hmm. uh, well, India is not as wealthy as it used to be before the British came in and plundered all of the wealth of India and put it in the British Museum. <laughs> but before then, you know, you had the Hope Diamond. The Hope Diamond was the biggest diamond in the world. It was, it was, a, it was a diamond on the head of Mother Sita. Some people say Radharani. It was stolen from one particular temple. And, and then the Pujari, the Pujari, when he found that it was stolen, he put a curse on those who those stole it, that whatever, whoever stole that, whatever country they're from, that country would become destroyed. Mm -hmm. And so um, that the Hope Diamond wound up in the British Museum right at, not long after that, Britain lost all of their wealth all around the world. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Hope Diamond wound up in, the, in Washington, D.C., in America now. And so... We're watching history unfold now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Pujari was, he was a powerful Pujari. That was a power, that was, some say it was Radharani's diamond, others say it was Mother Sita's diamond. I'm not sure. We'd have to do a little research on that. So wealth is meant for the deities, for the Lord, like that. The devotees have built a palace of gold in New Vrindavan in West Virginia. But it's all for the Lord. So these these things, if you don't use them, then they are taken by the materialists. So we use, we take them, and we use them for the service of the Lord, to glorify the Lord, to give opulence of the Lord. Whatever the opulence in the Lord in the world is placed there by the Lord, it's meant to be used for the Lord. Right now. 
so maharaj like this verse can be extended to general wealth not just the gold but even general wealth any kind yeah. of opulence yeah 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 the, the principle is the same yeah thank you maharaj yeah thank you vamsi hari krishna hari krishna I think um, we have a question on the chat from Rishbhu Das Prabhu. He's saying that Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj and devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri La Prabhupada, you Guru Dev, and assembled Vaishnavas. Dear Maharaj, there is a big chance that currencies will collapse all over the world. So, how should devotees try to save Krishna's Lakshmi? they have in their possession if gold is not good to have good to hoard and once more small thing what was what was real wealth maharaj that's his question hari krishna mm -hmm. well a practical question what should we you know um, that is a forecast on the horizon um, that is a plan by the plan makers to digital did digitalize all wealth around the world no one will have any kind of wealth anymore everything will be through the computer you know, everything will be done electronically that's a plan whether it manifests in 10 years 20 years 50 years we don't know but that is a plan that's in progress and there's a reason there's reasons for that which i won't get into so what should devotees do with their paper money now? Should they buy gold? <laughs> well, that's questionable. Um, the actually, another principle of wealth is land. So I would suggest devotees use their wealth. As Prabhupada said, buy land, make these farm communities, develop self-sufficiency, grow your own food, keep cows, and uh, live a very uh, natural lifestyle, which is not dependent on cities and uh, artificial forms of wealth. Um, there's a book called, uh, what is it called? Hmm. Spiritual Economics. It's an interesting book by one of my god brothers, um, Daneshwar. He wrote the book. He talks about, in relationship to Prabhupada's plan, that wealth will be what you need. And then the barter system, he, when he was talking about Prabhupada's idea for a barter system. If you have something that I need and I have something you need, we trade. And so labor and goods become the medium of exchange. I come and do things for you. I give you some of the products that I have. You produce other products and you give to me. And therefore, this paper money is no longer needed. So everything, everything all wealth comes from the land. Everything comes from the land. So if you have valuable land or good land, you can do so much with land. All your, all your needs are provided by the land and by cows. Everything is there. Cows and land provide everything you need. And when it rains, everything benefits. And Thank you. Uh, what's the second lab part of the question? What is real wealth? Yeah, I just gave the yeah I gave the example. Real wealth is uh, Dana Danavan, as Prabhupada says, land and cows, which produces everything you need. You can build your houses. You can heat your houses. You can grow your food. You can have everything you need. You may not have a very sophisticated computer, but you won't need it. <laughs> we live in a very artificial, soul-killing society now. Destroys all the qualities of the living beings. 
We all send everything around electronics, machines. Everything is machines, machines, machines. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. It's so good to see you, and I'm glad you seem to be feeling much better. I'm glad to see that. <laughs> I just, Thank you. Uh, yes, of course, of course, Maharaj. Um, I just want to wanted to say thank you for. I'm so glad that you're giving this particular class on this verse because um, it's very sobering, and you have such a lovely way of presenting sobering topics. Um, <laughs> So it's so helpful and so beneficial. I really love when you said that um, the material world is a place where we make full of fools of ourselves. And when you said it, I, I, it's very, it was very clear to me. Yes, I, I, yes, I agree with that 100%. Um, so so um, Maharaj, the book that you mentioned, Spiritual Economics, is that Eric Butterworth? Is that his name? His uh, non-spiritual name? I'm not sure, his, but he's now known as Daneshwara. Okay. Spiritual economics, there it is. Somebody posted it and it's on Amazon. It's yeah. interesting. Okay, yes, I will look for that. Thank you very much. And, um, you, and I, you did give us, I know you've, you've spoken already about the wealth, real wealth in the world. Um, and I just, I just, I, I, I just want to ask you because I want to hear you say, I want to hear your answer about how we as devotees um, can protect ourselves spiritually, can protect our spiritual lives in such, you know, the community. world is so degraded. Community, develop Krishna conscious community, or join a Krishna conscious community, and the and the community should be aligned with the instructions of Prabhupada for community development. We have some good communities developing already. We have Gita Nagari in Pennsylvania. We have Saranagati in uh, Canada. We have, uh, you know, we have New Raja Dam in, uh, in Hungary. Uh, these are the communities that are in line with Srila Prabhupada's instructions. We have Govardhan Ekar village in just north of Bombay. So there are, now these are prototypes for future developments. Mm -hmm. We can learn from these communities and uh, it takes leadership to do that, to create more communities, but we can always, you know, connect with an existing community and see what it means to live in such an environment. Like that. Living in a community doesn't mean you have your house there and then you go to work somewhere else. <laughs> That's not living in the community. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you again for the class. And I hope that we have you again many, many times on this on this canto. This is actually my favorite canto. I hope um, you give me this chapter all the time because it's one of my favorite chapters. <laughs> Raj Prabhu. Oh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Dhanu Pranam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Nice to see you, Hare Krishna. Nice to see you, Maharaj. So beautiful to see you all the time. Thank you, Maharaj. What a beautiful class, Maharaj. Right on the on the point, you know. I loved your uh, analogy of Prabhupada of bathroom. We can mm -hmm. uh, certainly make a million dollar of bathroom putting so many things in, but uh, we use it uh, for whatever we use it. We all know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so... Also, you know, uh, the, the past time you said about the Lord of England, when he could have became a Brahman, but he refused to, to leave the four things. But this, this is why I think Prabhupada purports are sometimes so strong to make uh, fools like me understand, you know, what is life. So beautiful. Maharaj, I have a small question. Yesterday, I was talking to a Caucasian girl. And, uh, you know, when you meet, uh, you, you ask them, how are you doing and whatnot? And she said uh, she had better times. So I asked, okay, what's happening? So she said uh, her aunt, who is 70 years old today, because I was talking to her yesterday, 
today she will be going through assisted dying so you know that in canada there is a law that you can choose it uh so i was kind of uh, very sad and on the other side i was happy too thinking that okay she knows when she is going away because uh, it's difficult to know when you will go away and krishna in bhagavad gita says uh, whatever uh, state of mind you will have while time of going uh, you will certainly attain that so i i prayed to that girl i said if you do me this favor i wrote on the on the on the on the paper hari krishna maha mantra and i told her that she can youtube this too like this is millions of videos on youtube so maharaj what is uh, the position of somebody like uh, like this uh, maybe she she will listen to me and she can she can do that but certainly she is in a bad condition that's why she she chose this assisted dying so what is, of course certainly as devotees we want to serve krishna until our last breath but what is the position of somebody like this uh, maharaj if she if she is even able to remember this maha hari krishna maha mantra tomorrow, today actually if she can remember it what is her position yeah yeah maharaj and obviously she get that's up to krishna but she'll definitely get a much better destination than she's headed for she may even get a chance to take birth in a family of devotees in her next life and begin krishna consciousness there or even higher than that she may also get a chance to associate with krishna somewhere in the material world in one of the planets uh that's up to krishna yeah but uh ultimately that kind of mercy if you could deliver that is great service to that living entity because if you can move a living entity from one position to a better position that's great service that's great service spiritual position mm-hmm. yes maharaj actually i was thinking yesterday i was so uh, my mind was very i was sad in a certain certain way i was thinking wow what the world is going through people have to go through assisted dying but they have they can have their own motives right we we can't judge them but i was certainly thinking i should ask uh, where this is happening which hospital and maybe we can bring some bhagavad gita or some kind of literature which can you know give peace to them or maybe to the relatives too because that's the reality will they will see right in front of their eyes so yeah that's what i was thinking yeah and somebody could read the bhagavad gita to the person even if they can't hear it maybe because they're in a coma or something then uh, there's benefit cuz you know the subtle energy will have its effect okay maharaj thank you so much maharaj maharaj please bless us for this kartik month that we can just stay together and uh, take hari naam as much as we can maharaj yeah that's a wonderful request yeah that's Well, if i can if i can say anything in regard to that i would say yes my Thank best wishes uh, keep the holy name first and uh, and krishna's pastimes especially his pastime of tree damodar is the most sweetest and the most delightful pastime of krishna and tree vrindavan thank you maharaj thank you so much maharaj have a good day maharaj hari hey, krishna hari krishna any last minute questions for maharaj lalitangi mata ji was asking okay hare krishna maharaj please accept my humble obeisances all good krishna prabhu pad thank you so much maharaj for the wonderful class and thank you so much nice to see you maharaj i was worried if you are able to give class or not then i have another <laughs> class coming up after this one <laughs> maharaj please take care of your health you know don't stress too much yeah thank you maharaj hari krishna maharaj please accept our respectful obeisances thank you so much for your continuous association and when we see that how much uh, uh, you know you and others uh, other spiritual masters they take i mean at this age and with so much factors 
that's uh, that are constraints but still you keep giving us association it's such a wonderful example to see maharaj and we want to follow that uh, if you have time is there time for one question i heard you have another class coming up yeah my class is in about 2 hours but i have a little time oh, okay so uh, in the purport shila prabhupad mentions that uh, because of the the gold is so much uh, found in the western countries and uh, that's why there are four sinful activities there uh, predominantly there uh, but practically if i'm seeing an indian lady wants more gold than a westerner or a family in the locker in terms of the jewels and other things it's become a custom to give gold during marriage so much of gold so i was trying to understand that uh, line of shila prabhupad uh, what it means maharaj you can answer that question better than i can <laughs> <laughs> i'm not an indian lady so i can't do it <laughs> i don't have the adhikari for that one <laughs> wealth must be used in the service of the lord take your take the gold and donate it to the deity but even now in our temples especially in in the western temples particularly in the western temples the jewelry on the deities is not real it's it's more or less custom jewelry because many times people who come into the temple when they see that wealth on the deities they make plans to steal it mm. and that's happened so probably the probably was here he said you know better not to use real on the deities at least when they're giving darshan mm-hmm. so you know but the you know ladies like gold <laughs> so what am i supposed to say <laughs> jewelry and stuff but you should use a portion of that for mm. donate it yeah thank you maharaj now i remember when i uh, when we gave some silver articles for use in chennai temple the pujari was uh, uh, anxious and said that mata ji can you use this for your house deities because i am very anxious to protect this it's it's a big thing that it gets lost uh, over a period of time yeah now what you say is uh, makes sense yeah and there's, also there's people who are like out there to steal we look for these things yeah as you said also traditionally a uh, large amount of gold was given during marriage so that if there is any financial problems that gold is used to stabilize the uh, husband's financial condition and it uh, that's what my grandmother used to tell me that in those days it used to have more often that most of our jewelries are in the lo- banker and then we get some money and again the jewelry comes back and that's how we were um running the family jewelry and gold uh, and and as you said the land uh, was considered uh, an asset and to use during the tough times <laughs> thank you thank you maharaj thank you so much for your wonderful wonderful association purifying Hare association hari krishna hari krishna Okay, then we we can end here. Ah, uh, we have one hand raised. Oh, pretty. Okay. Um, Hari Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. It's always so pleasant to see your face. You are muted. You are mute. You got your volume went off. Oh, sorry. um hari krishna maharaj um thank you so much for your wonderful lecture it's always so pleasing to see your face and your voice gives so much solace sometimes when i'm 
in anxiety so i always love listening to your lectures i feel everything will be all right when i listen to your lectures i i get that feeling somehow um and my question was um we we know we hear so much from shrimad bhagavatam uh from bhagavad gita and also from our prabhupad's lectures about the anarthas about um uh, all the other um uh, uh four regulative principles and all that but even after getting into the path of practicing devotional um and doing sadhana uh, we do tend to sometimes um lure into temptations and do anarthas and um uh, you know anar- anarthas hitas and we try to kind of do something that is prohibited and then but we have not yet given up devotional life we can still keep doing it and then there is so much um guilt associated with it repentance associated with it and um we put ourselves so down that we don't even think we are um even we deserve to even chant the holy name how do we come across with this amount of guilt or uh, or you know sometimes you also feel like you're feeling guilty so you can do it again it's so confusing it gets all muddled up in the head so yeah, many well, mixed mm-hmm. feelings yeah there's this this there's this psychological aberration where well i blew it might as well just keep going <laughs> i'm so i've already fallen down so i'm going to keep going and go even farther down it's kind of like a, you're punishing yourself even more you hate yourself for what you did and you just want to punish yourself more by doing the same thing but that's that is not at all a solution that's just a mental aberration um the idea is all right i made a mistake and so what caused me to make the mistake what was the association that led to me making the mistake was it some wrong media was it some wrong person or was it just my attachments cuz coming again to the forefront um due to some circumstance um if you see a circumstance that that kind of electrifies or sparks a particular bad quality you, you try to avoid that circumstance or that situation um but you learn from your mistake and then you try to uh you stop it and then you pick up but then the success success is not only stopping the activity but is purifying the heart that's mentioned in the uh beginning of the sixth canto of shrimad bhagavatam when the direction is feeling so bad about all the living entities who have to suffer in the hellish planets that comes up at the end of the fifth canto of the hellish planets he says is there any atonement for them and then uh, sugadev goswami goes into the whole science of atonement that simply stopping the activity and repenting for it is not atonement one has to purify that desire by destroying it at the root and that's where bhakti comes in so what we did many years ago maybe we're not doing now because we've had somehow the weather made an advancement in krishna consciousness so that's true when in our present situation whatever we are experiencing now is still an arthas some attachment something that appears uh, out of nowhere and we somehow go for it that will also be destroyed if we take the association of devotees and continue to seriously chant the holy names of the lord and avoid the situations which spark these these anarthas from appearing that's also okay, important yeah okay maharaj thank you so much thank you yeah yeah thank you hari krishna and uh, please take care of your health thank you but don't but don't punish yourself because that that doesn't solve the problem when all right i made a mistake i have to pick up and i have to learn from my mistake so we go forward right okay that gives um so much more strength to what i was thinking um yeah I, i mean i also know somebody who's going through that so that's exactly the kind of suggestion i was trying to give them also so that kind of also um yeah it it reinforces that my thinking 
was right. Yeah, good. Don't berating oneself unnecessarily will simply cause one to do the same thing again sooner or later. It doesn't solve the problem. It just pushes the problem into an, an, another area of the mind and it'll come back again. That's all. Yeah, that, that thing that you said makes a lot of sense to me, Maharaj, but uh, that um, actually just repentance and uh, not doing it doesn't really solve. Actually nipping it by the root desire, um, the, yeah, the thing, the, poten- the uh, impetus to do it, uh, to remove that from the bud is more important. And you can do that through bhakti. Thank you. That, made, yeah. that gave um, the right sense. Yes, Bhakti. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Always so, so grateful for your kind words. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Can I ask one question, Maharaj? Do you have time? Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. My question is, uh, like, uh, devotees also, like, you know, have the, um, this gold and everything they also wear and they also, you know, use it for themselves and also use it for Krishna's service. Um, and especially when the ladies get ready in India, usually when it's a devotee or non-devotee, they just generally wear everything, all the jewelry on them. So how do you look, how to look at this when, when we say like, when we say to non-devotee, okay, this gold, everything is, you know, you don't have to store it's, it's all, uh, uh, you know, it's it's not good uh, for our Krishna consciousness. But at the same time, we also see devotees who have everything and wearing everything, but they are Krishna consciousness. How? But how to convince the uh, non-devotee uh, to explain this? <laughs> I'm not going to try to answer that question. <laughs> convincing people or not convincing people is understood by example. <laughs> oh, okay, Maharaj, thank you so much. Be an example for what you want other people to be. That's the best form of convincing. Words have some potency, but actions are the real the real way to preach or the way really to communicate so yeah if you want to somehow make a message be an example for what that message is thank you maharaj that is really very powerful statement that we should only be uh, you know we should show the power like within our with our actions not just by the words yeah thank you thank you so much maharaj that that really you know makes sense and i can you know work, uh, um, try to do it for myself and be an example hari krishna thank you so devotees i have to leave i have another program coming up very soon So it's incumbent on me to depart at this particular point. But thank you very much. I offer my obeisances to all the Vaishnavas. Thank you for coming. You have such a wonderful group. So interested in the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. It's very inspiring. Continue. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj.